Welcome to Bennett Fishing, folks. I'm going to do a video that I haven't done in a little while, which is talking about my electronics. Now, what I don't want you to do is make the same mistake that I made with Garmin LiveScope. I made a huge mistake. I should have spent a little bit more money, just like everybody says about with LiveScope. You kind of either kind of buy once, cry once, unfortunately. So Garmin LiveScope Plus is what I have. It's a very expensive unit. Just the sonar is an expensive unit. So just this sonar itself is like $1,500. Uh, I'm running an amped outdoor. I think it's a 30 amp hour battery. That's about $200. The black box on the back is $500. And then the head unit can be down all the way down to like, I think 600 bucks, which is six, $700, which is the Garmin 93 SV, which I think is the smallest nine inch slowest one you can buy for live scope and then i'm running the uh, gps map 923 xsv now i do want to tell you right now garmin's website is a complete piece of garbage they literally you can't even get a want to hold of something like you could probably call customer service and have them walk you through what to buy for your boat but I bought this as a like individual stuff off, off Bass Pro and then built it with a Summit shuttle. So let me show you my, my whole setup here. It's kind of wonky right now because I haven't fully switched it over to open water season. We just kind of finished ice season re recently. So I'm running the Summit shuttle and this is from Summit Fishing. Now I'm not sponsored by Garmin and I'm not sponsored by Summit at all. So I'm running their shuttle. I got my battery here, my head unit here, and then my black box which is this thing in the back you do need a power switch because otherwise you will kill the battery and actually will never charge so make sure you install a power switch when you do this this bag's kind of nice i have an extra sonar in there ice fishing sonar and then i have uh, supplies and stuff on that side like hooks and jigs and tackle now i'm running the summit pole off a ram mount that i kind of made myself and right now i'm going to loosen this and i'll show you that i have it in forward mode but that extends this is the boat pole which is a little bit longer now the image clarity on this is absolutely fantastic so right now we have a little bit what's called ghost tree so these are actual returns that are coming back from the sonar and basically hitting themselves that's the way that I understand it I can turn some of that off by sonar setup ghost rejection on high and I can turn some of that off to make it look really pretty I'd rather have the information there and so see how it lags still a little bit and this is a this is a 13 1400 unit it's not very cheap uh, or the head unit so the head unit does a lot of work and the gls 10 the black box in the box in the back does a lot of work so as you can see right there is my jig now live time that has a little bit of delay in it because i added the ghost tree in so i'm actually going to take that back off Sonar setup, ghost tree, back off. And now we got rid of a lot of that delay, which is kind of nice. So the bag's nice. The entire thing's made out of uh, basically, it's all 3D printed. I have not broken anything on it yet, and I have not broken anything on the pole yet, surprisingly. Now, the major problem is, is last year, so this is my full kind of one year review and why I don't want you to make the same mistake that I did is last year I bought this probably midsummer without the summit shuttle and I mounted the head unit hard to my boat and then I mounted GLS the black box underneath here and I mounted the battery in the back so and then I had my pole hanging off the side without this little stopper on here and this is just made out of uh, like plastic wood you can buy at Lowe's or Home Depot I'll leave a link for that stuff below and I'll leave a link for all this stuff below of course problem is is I am a, I have a tiller boat so I work, work out of the back of my boat. I have a great system for working out of the back of my boat when I'm by myself. The problem is when I invite people on the boat, I have an issue where now I need to, last year I couldn't move it anywhere because it was hard mounted. Now that I have it in the shuttle, I'm really worried that this thing's gonna fly out of the boat. So I do have to find a way to, it's really heavy, do have to find a way to mount it hard onto the boat, um, like clip it in or strap it in so it doesn't fly because when I have someone else in the boat, I have to do this. 
I have a secondary mount up there, and then I put my bag on the very, very front there, which is also very, very sketchy. And that way I can live scope off the front of the boat and cast like you would a normal boat, except for when I want to turn the sonar that way, the trolling motor gets in the way instead of having it on the trolling motor. As far as the mistakes go, is I should have really bought another screen. And I'll tell you how, now that I kind of know how Garmin works, as I came from Hummingbird before, is what I should have done is bought another Garmin 93 SV, so not this head unit, but the cheaper one at the time, a network box, and networked the front one to the, the back one to the front one, and had another one up front. That way I would have had two screens. I wouldn't have to move it, I wouldn't have to shuttle it. I could hardwire everything, get in a networks box, which is like 200 something dollars with another cable. So it probably would have been out another 900 bucks or so. But then I wouldn't have to be worried about doing all that and moving things up front and back and, and all that jazz. So this cable is actually 20 feet long. So all I have to do is run the cable down and underneath my rod locker and have a central point where I can move it front and back. So I could, when I'm by myself, I could work out of the back of the boat. When I'm with somebody, I can run it out of the front of my boat. Uh, what's the glory of this is I can pop it off and put it on my canoe. Uh, it's already in ice fishing mode. So when ice fishing season comes, I don't need to take my boat apart and stuff like that. That's what I should have done. Now that I have the G, uh, a GPS map and an echo map, those two aren't compatible with networking for some stupid reason from Garmin, just to help make you buy more expensive units. The reason I opted for the GPS map unit is because I can actually record live scope on my phone. And I'll show you some footage kind of overlaid right here of that from a couple days ago where there's like lake trout and fish everywhere. It was really, really epic. As far as a one year review goes, I absolutely love uh, of this thing. Like it is a double thumbs up. I have learned so much about one fish behavior, where fish could actually possibly be. Uh, I actually have a fish on the screen right now. Like these, the stuff that I have learned in the last year of owning LiveScope has brought me, has saved me probably 10 years of asking people questions and going out and figuring stuff out myself. Where LiveScope says, I can see what the fish are doing. I can see if that bait is too, too big for them where they're shying away. I can downsize. I can see if the fish are up shallow or if they're up deep. Now this is the Garmin 90, 90 uh, this is the Garmin LiveScope Plus of the LVS34. They do make a, uh, an XR version with extended range. This one's supposed to see 200 feet. Right now I'm seeing 130 feet around me and 55 feet down. And I'm jigging for lake trout. And I start to lose this jig. Here, I'll show you. I start to lose this jig at 120 feet with spot lock, so vertical jigging. And that's, that's a little tiny seven millimeter tungsten crappy jig. It is absolutely fantastic. Rarely do I fish for lake trout over 100 unless I'm on a, a bigger lake or something like that. And then I'll switch over to, to 2D if I have to. Now, one of the most common questions that gets asked is, why are you running a pole instead of running, a, running the sonar from live scope on your trolling motor? Well, one, I don't always fish in the front of my boat. And two is right now, I have no fish around me in this direction. I'm not sure which way to go. So I'd have to, if it was on my bow, I'd have to spin my trolling mole all the way around, take it off spot lock. Right here, I can just do this. See, now there's a fish that's 55 feet behind me, right there. And I can cast them, right? And instead of having it forward facing, if you're just bass fishing and stuff like that, when you're not really multi-species like I am, it makes a lot of sense to have it just on your bow, just looking forward, especially if you don't have a co-angler with you a lot of the times, that's where it makes a little more sense. But if you're going after crappy, if you're going after uh, lake trout, if you're going after any of these species that it's not super competitive and you're not like forward casting the whole time or even vertical jigging, a pole is the way to go. Even if I had, even if I was doing a bass fishing tournament, I would run the pole off the trolling motor but have it independent so I can pan around while I'm on spot lock. So right now the wind's blowing at my face. So my mistake, not buying two head units. Garmin's website is still complete garbage. Um, do I suggest buying one of these setups? Yes, I'll leave the link for all of this stuff below. 
if you're ice fishing, if you're doing any sort of pan fishing, this is like absolute cheat code, like finding fish, tracking them down. In a small pond, you can just save yourself days and days and days worth of finding the right spot for a crappy or, or, or even bass for that matter, especially during the ice fishing season. It is absolutely fantastic. So I uh, hope you guys learn from my mistake and either uh, call Garmin and figure out a way to you know, network your boat or be okay with the shuttle. There are more expensive shuttles out there like uh, Arc Lab and like there's a couple other ones that make like metal ones uh this one works for me for right now i wish i had upgraded the pole that'll probably be next year because it is kind of a wonky system but it does work so thanks for watching